Hey everyone, I'm Dennis from First Electric Ride. Today I've got some business in Vinitsa, about 260 kilometers from Kiev. I need to spend about two hours there. That's why I decided to try something interesting. I've never driven my dual motor Volkswagen ID4 at a low average speed before. With the current blackouts, everyone's worried about range and battery life. So I want to do this experiment. The car's at 80% charge, but I'll treat it as 50% with 30% reserve. Officially, my car can go 550 kilometers according to the CLTC cycle. So by driving slowly, we should be able to cover 250 kilometers on 50% charge. I'll drive to Vinitsa at an average of 80 kilometers per hour, maybe 90 on Kiev Zydomir Road and slow down to 70 in towns. So let's head to Vinitsa and maintain that average speed at 80 kilometers per hour. We will charge there and on the way back, we'll drive freely, maybe 130, although without breaking speed limits. When returning to Kiev, we'll analyze whether it's worth going fast, measuring both the time and cost, or going slow, doing the same. Friends, I want to remind you that you can support this video by hitting a like button, subscribing to our channel, and of course, any comment. We've never done Eco Rally tests before, so this will be a first. Leave your thoughts in the comments below what other cars to test like this. I will be waiting for your suggestions. Now, we're setting off on a trip, and I also want to emphasize that we'll stop in Zittemeyer and see at what stage the hub from the WOG company, formerly Flash Hub, You've all heard about it for a while, and we're all awaiting its opening, since there aren't many charging stations on Zitomir Bypass. Now let's start our journey. Friends, we've passed the military checkpoint, and the navigator shows a range of 250 kilometers, which suits us just fine. We've reset all the onboard computers and set the AC to 20 degrees Celsius. My wife is 23 degrees Celsius. And by the way, the car is loaded with three adults, including myself and one child so we'll call it an average load. I'll say it again. I'll try to maintain an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour, which will allow me to go 95 kilometers per hour on the Kiev Zidomir road and a bit slower on the Zidomir Venitsa section. I'm going to stick to that plan. As always, hit the like button and come along with us. Also, we noted that when leaving Kiev, we had 75% battery charge, so our goal is to arrive with more than 25% remaining. Friends, our first stop is the WOG station, formerly Flash Hub, and now, hopefully, the WOG Hub. There are four charging stations with at least 120 kilowatts each, Austrian made for a total of eight fast connectors plus one. You can fit eight cars there, but I won't go there yet as construction is still ongoing. However, I know for sure there'll be a couple of GPT chargers. So basically it's a huge hub with great power. Now let's quickly analyze our trip so far. We've driven 107 kilometers, spent one hour and 16 minutes, averaged 84 kilometers per hour, and used 23% of the charge. Currently, we have 52% left and average consumption is 15.7 kilowatt per 100 kilometers. This suggests that at 100% charge, the car could go about 465 kilometers at this pace, meaning I'll arrive in Vinitsa with less than 25% charge. But we've been driving at 95 to 90 kilometers per hour at times, so there's still a chance to improve this small difference. We're leaving now and hope the hub will be operational soon. We'll keep you updated. Hit the like button and we continue our journey. Friends, we have a somewhat disappointing update. We've used exactly 50% of the battery charge and traveled 216 kilometers. You can see that now. This tells us that this car's range at 100% charge is definitely no more than 450 kilometers. We haven't reached Venitsa yet. Friends, we have 28 kilometers left and that's where we'll get the full results. Consumption is 15.9 kilowatt, but I maintained an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Friends, we're in Venitsa at the Apresto Hotel and Restaurant. I like revisiting trusted places. I charged here during my Opel Mokka trip and I have a meeting here today. Let's summarize. First result is the car didn't last 250 kilometers on 50% charge. It actually took 56% charge. You can see on the screen that I arrived in Venitsa with 20% charge, but right after I took a screenshot, it showed 19%. Consumption was 15.7 kilowatt for 100 kilometers. I maintained an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour and drove this checkpoint to checkpoint in exactly three hours. These are the interim results, good or bad. That's up to you to decide. Frankly, I can't drive that much slowly. On my usual trips, I try to go 95 to 105 kilometers per hour, but I don't like to exceed the speed limits. I prefer smooth overtaking. Anyway, I'll have my meeting now and then we'll charge. By the way, a surprise awaited me at the charger, which I'll tell you about now. I'll charge up to about 90%, then drive back dynamically, and we'll see how it goes. 
We'll calculate how much money was saved when driving efficiently. On the screen, you can see two options, the cost of charging at home versus public charging. We'll put this data into a table. Now about charging. As I said, I like proven spots. Previously, there was a 120 kilowatt charging station here. I spoke to the charger's owner and he said they were planning to increase the power, but it turned out they couldn't. Surprisingly, there's now another charging station here with a 60 kilowatt capacity. This charger belongs to our partners, Echo Zaryat. We're holding our meeting and moving toward Kiev. There's something else interesting. The peculiarity is that this is my first time charging at this station without a CCS adapter. These stations have both a CCS combo connector and a GBT connector for Chinese electric cars. As you may know, I replaced my port. If you haven't seen it, you can check the video following the link below. I can say that these stations work perfectly with both the GBT connector and the CCS2 connector. We are leaving Vinitsa now. At the moment, we have 86% charge, but I've been driving with this percentage for a while, so I think we should focus on 85%. We've reset the onboard computer, and now everything is at zero. And just as I thought, we have exactly 85%. I will take some pictures for you. Now let's speed up. Of course, we'll slow down in populated areas. And just a reminder, we kept an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour on the way to Vinitsa, but now we'll try to hit 100 to 105 kilometers per hour. I'm not promising anything, but I'll try. Quick update. We've driven 112 kilometers, used 21 kilowatt, and our average speed is 94 kilometers per hour. But folks, to be honest, to reach average of 100 kilometers per hour on this Vinitsa Zitomir road, we'd need to speed up. I drove carefully, so we'll aim to increase our average speed on the Zitomir Kiev road. Current consumption is 20 kilowatt per 100 kilometers. Charge is down from 85% to 53%, meaning we used 32% of the charge. We will recalculate for the 113 kilometers. For now, I can't draw any conclusions. I'm curious about the Zitomir Kiev road. Let's continue. It's 1630 and we've been on the road for one hour and 51 minutes, but there's traffic jam on the Zitomir highway. This might affect our experiment. I'm recording the results now and we'll stick them together later. We stopped at 1630, lost eight minutes, and got back on the highway by 1638. However, the average speed dropped from 97 to 90 kilometers per hour. I'm not sure how to calculate it, but I think we'll subtract eight minutes from the total time and add seven kilometers to the average speed. I see no other option. There's a traffic light ahead of military checkpoint. We've covered 240 kilometers in two hours and 29 minutes. Therefore, we made it in two hours and 21 minutes, considering that we subtract eight minutes in traffic jam. Now, we are heading to the charging station, and I'll make my conclusions. Friends, it's a well-known fact that with home charger or charging at work, electric vehicle is a cost-effective. Whether slow driving with the cost of $0.017 per kilometer or fast driving, it's still under $0.02 per kilometer. Therefore, it's simple. If you have your own charging setup, an electric car is worth considering. Now let's talk about public charging stations. I've never owned a LPG car, but given today's prices, I think even $0.052 per kilometer is clearly cheaper than a LPG car of similar size and weight. Yet $0.074 per kilometer is about the cost of driving a diesel car. So if you don't have your own charging setup, you need to be very careful when buying an electric car. It's definitely cheaper to drive in the city but if you're using highways often, you need to calculate carefully. Let's look at the next table to see whether it's cost effective for long trips comparing travel time and charging time. The second table shows us that if we ignore the increasing costs, the faster we drive, the shorter our electric car's battery range. For example, on the kiev vinitsa route, if we drove at an average speed of 80 km per hour, the range would have been 432 km. But with dynamic driving, my electric car's range drops to 328 km. This would be fine if there wasn't a 40 minute difference. You might say, Dennis, that's a lot. Don't we need to recharge? This brings us back to the fact that electric cars have complex nonlinear calculations. If we consider recharging to cover the 17% difference, the trip would take 2 hours and 30 minutes or 2 hours and 27 minutes in the case of the 17% overrun. I'd have to stop at a public station to recharge, 
So what is my conclusion? I have to plan each route individually. When we have to travel far, we need to plan our route and check for charging stations. This will determine our travel conditions. For instance, on a 400 km trip, we could drive with the average speed of 90 km per hour without charging. Another case is when we drive a 300 km trip, not minding the cost of the trip. So friends, draw your own conclusions. You've seen the data, this is Dennis. See you next time. <laughs>